Hey, what's up team? Eddie Gray here, that Logic Pro guy. We're celebrating monetizing this channel, so I just wanted to give you some love back. Thank you so much for helping me get here, and now I want to help you get to the next level. So first, we're going to start off with the Logic Pro default saving path. I'm going to tell you everything that I currently know about saving files within Logic Pro. It's quite extensive, so take notes. You're going to want to go into your computer, users, your name, and then the music folder. There are actually three music folders, so just be careful. But if I click on the hard drive, we go under users, again, your name, music, Logic Pro. This is the default saving path. So every single time you hit Command S, whether it's intentionally or not, this is where Logic is saving the file. If you don't hit Command S, then Logic is going to automatically back this up for you and save it for you. So let's be cognizant of where we're saving our files. So let's go over to Logic Pro. You can see I'm gonna start up a new session here. We can determine our input device. We can tap tempo. There's a lot of great features here. But once I go ahead and start up a session, let's say we start chopping it up here, now it's time to hit Command S. We want to save this unless you designate a different location. Like I said, Macintosh HD, users, your name, music, logic folder. Now, we've talked about saving files within this channel. Make sure that you include all of these assets. Never again save as a package because that can destroy things. We want to save as a folder. That's going to make your whole life a whole lot easier. I want to introduce you to something here. I'm going to send this over to my desktop, Command D, okay? And so every time you hit Command S, Logic is saving the file. And I'll hit Command S once again. I'll hit it a third time. When I go to the top of the menu bar under File, Revert To, you can see that Logic is actually backing this up every single time that I hit Command S. And so if you want to change that feature, you simply go to settings and instead of having 10 versions you can have let's call it 30. So now let me hit command s a bunch of times. All right, let's go back up here, revert to. All right. And so you can see the connection here. Something else that is absolutely paramount to understand as a Logic Pro Power user is the startup action. We want to make sure that we set this accordingly. Most of us have it just set on something we don't even know what it does you can either have logic do nothing when you first open it up you can have it open the most recent project i know this is a point of pain for a lot of people they're wondering why is the same session always opening up well it's because of this specific function so personally i like logic to either select a template or to ask me what it is that i want to do perhaps you're a composer and you have a default template, you want to start working right away, you can choose create new project using the default template. Lots of great stuff here. If you don't know how to create a template, go up to file, save as template, and you can see the file path here. Computer, users, Eddie Gray, music, under audio music apps, project templates. So we're going to cover a lot of ground here, but before I go, Definitely want to introduce you to this concept of project alternatives. Do me a massive favor and every single time you save another version of your project, let's say you add guitars or you're probably going to change the arrangement, go ahead and create a new alternative. And what this is going to do is not only keep things in line in case you make a mistake, you can always go backwards in time. But more importantly, let's say that the session gets corrupt for whatever reason. We know that most of the problems that we have within a DAW occur simply because there are plug-in compatibility problems. So if you ever get in a bind, hold option as you open up a session, and you're going to be met with select alternative and backup window dialog. This is a way to safe-proof your sessions no matter what happens. So you can see I can select a different alternative. We have all of the available backups, which we've talked about. So this is certainly the way to move forward as you save your files 
in Logic Pro. And the last topic I'd like to cover is when you're saving a session. I don't think a lot of Logic Pro users understand that when you actually hit Command S, you are literally saving a snapshot. So I'm gonna hit Command S right now, and that is the snapshot that I saved. So the next time I open up Logic Pro, it will be summoned in this state. So let me open up the mixer, hit Command S, let me hit Option Command W to close this session. And so now Logic Pro is open, the application is open, but the session is closed. And so now let me open up this test session and you can see that it was brought back into the fold, but with the mixer open. So let's close the mixer. Let's open up the loop browser, Command S. Again, Option Command W. You could also go up here and you can close the window close the project let's close the project okay of course the next time i open it the apple loops browser is open one final note which happens to a lot of newbies let's say you have a plugin open could be an eq could be a compressor i see this all the time individuals will close the tracks area or the main window of logic pro by clicking on this red circle atop the left side of the screen. Now what they don't understand is that Logic Pro is theoretically still open. You can see that the compressor is open. Sometimes they'll hit Command S here or Logic will automatically save the session for them. Let me go ahead and just click here on this plugin window and then Logic's gonna ask me, what do you wanna do? So I say save Logic in turn creates that snapshot that visual snapshot of the session in its current state and so the next time i open my session i can't tell you how many times it happens to folks they say i don't know where my session is you know all i see is a plugin so let's just make a distinction between closing the logic pro main window if i hit command one i can reopen that closing additional plugin windows and closing any and all pop-up windows as well. For example, I've seen people also get flustered with what's called the event float. If you ever double click a MIDI note, you'll see this. Again, same behavior. If I hit Command S and then Command W to close the window, and this is the final thing that I save within a session, once I open it back up, the only thing I'm going to see is this floating event list editor. So you can see how that is very confusing. So just as a reminder, if you go to the window menu option up here, you can open up different windows, right? Logic Pro has this multi-pane workflow where we can see the mixer or the library or smart controls. But you also have this incredible opportunity to open up other windows. So let's say you wanted to open up a separate piano roll. You can also save this on a separate desktop as well. So now I'm working in the tracks area on one of my desktops and then when I swing over to the other desktop, I have full range over the entire piano roll editor. So this is a very unique and interesting way to work. We don't have to have two windows open, we can have a whole bunch of them. You can open up smart controls, you can open up a separate step sequencer, so on and so forth. But if you don't know what you're doing, you can certainly get lost. So make sure when you hit Command S, you're saving the Logic Pro main window, the tracks area, and then after that, you're free to close the window or the project. I always recommend closing the project, of course. Conversely, you can also quit Logic Pro just for that extra added security measure. So I'll hit Command S, I'll quit Logic Pro, and then now the next time I open this session, it's going to be in the state in which we last saved it. In the next video, we'll be talking about sampler, channel strip settings, patches, and untagged loops. I'll see you there.